Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a Hummel. It's the Tier 6 German SBG. It's located on the south west spawn of province under the command of Old Cook. Well, the M44 has just declared I'm going SPG hunting. Well, well, good luck to you if you can counter battery them. Old Cook's got a 15 centimeter howitzer and it's mounted in a hull that comes from a Panzer Mark IV. Well, it has part Panzer Mark III components. And it's the same chassis that was used for the Nashorn as well. He's just trying to decide which side he wants to, to fire at. He's dialing in, he's loaded. Going for these two, fires around. Oh, now! What happened there? I think the Leo got uh, a pits maneuver on him. He actually got spun round, and although Old Cook fired around in, unfortunately, it hit the rock face ahead of them. So he might have hit two for one there, but it didn't work out. Okay, on the other side of the map, we've got a Super Hellcat just took fire from two of our teammates. And there's the Leo and the T-37 and well they can't really be happy with each other there. Going for the AMD. Knocks the tree down. Should be fairly close to that AMD. In fact those two appear to be fighting it out together. The Leo and the T-37 not happy. I think somebody has um, got their knickers in a twist. Well there's the AMD again. Got that nice Mario Kart livery. We fire around in and the T-37 is being pushed towards... Yeah, he's being pushed out in front and he's gone. And the Leo's now gone over the edge and now he's vulnerable to fire. So that was a spat between two people that's resulted in two enemy tanks being taken out. Well, the Leo's about to die very shortly. Yep, he's gone. <laughs> Okay, over this side we've got a T-52 and the AMD's come around this side because uh, unfortunately there was a bit of a commotion going on the other side. Can't see that the enemy would be too happy but they are actually doing rather well at the moment. They're keeping, they're holding their own and Old Cook's decided to do some counter battery. He's looking for the enemy chaser and it's a lot easier to do that from above than it is in battle assistant mode. Much, much easier. He's waiting for any sign, any tracer from the enemy RT. They are still firing, and there are two of them, so... It's a Hummel and an M44. He's decided to fire at that bush. Something knocked that tree over. Something going up that side. Oh! Just noticed the tracer coming from that bush. So, yep, trees going over in that corner. There's definitely somebody in that corner. I suspect one of the arties is in that position. And yes, there is an arty in there. Unfortunately, that shell was wasted. There is an arty because I just saw a tracer again. So I suspect that one of them is in there. It may be the M44 in that little corner. After those shots, he's probably relocated. We did see some bushes go down. Definitely behind those bushes. Fires around in and... Doesn't get the kill. Now, it may be that he relocated, but there's something we can kill straight away. It's an AMD 178B. Just getting a solution on him. Unfortunately, that... Uh, that that ledge is a bit difficult to hit from this position. Much easier to hit over here with the KV-2. Unfortunately, again, the problem is that he's hiding behind that ledge, just as this AMD is hiding. But he's got a solution there, fires around in, and oh, the AMD dies before his shot arrives. That happens. Oh, T-3485 blew up. Uh, 
Over on this side of the map, we've got an IS and a T29 facing off against each other. Oh, Cook's almost loaded. Now, I should say that one of the things about the Hummel is you don't get a huge amount of ammunition. This RT only carries 18 rounds. He's trying to fire through that gap, and no, it's very, very difficult to do that. In fact, next to impossible. You can fire between those two buildings. There is a gap there, but trying to do it with a, an RT is, well, it's very difficult indeed. He's looking for another target to shoot at. Well, maybe that SU-100M1 is trying to get a solution, but he can't because the... Unfortunately, he has managed to make it past and into death later, that building. Now, maybe the Chi Re off to the left would be a better target to shoot at. We just lost the IS. Just lost our T29 to that Chi Re. Trying to go for the Super Hellcat. Rounds out. Just stunned him. Ah, but our teammate in the M44 got the kill. We're one tank down on the enemy at the moment. They're doing quite well. And that KV-3 is getting reasonably close. So, Old Cook might want to relocate soon. Direct hit, 278, right in his face. He can't be happy with that one. It's probably uh, knocked out a crew member, possibly his observation devices. He's driving slowly, so I suspect it may have taken out his driver. That's another RT round. I think that was the M44. Now we're trying to get a shot on that SU-100M1. He's gone down. Unfortunately, we just lost our M44. The KV-3 did spot him. Now, can we get a kill shot on this M KV-3? Lining him up. Dialing in. Well, it's a big hit for 153. And he was killed the next second by the Firefly. So it's a good job that one of the enemy, one of our teammates in the medium tank stayed behind to guard us. When it's four all left, um, left on the battlefield, the enemy still got that Chi Re over on the other side of the map, and Old Cook's got six rounds of ammo left. The end game is always when it gets tense. Both sides still have two arty. He fires at the Chi Re, but looks away. Oh, don't do that. Don't look away because you want to see the fall of shots. I don't know why you looked away. It's almost like you were not wanting to look just in case you missed. But it's important to learn exactly what happens to the shell. Almost loaded. He's dialing in. The T-37 jumps off the cliff and loses 188 hit points to come up behind the Chi Re. Will he be able to make this uh, count? We can't get a shot on him unless he pulls out behind that rock. Now we can get a shot on him. Oh, Cook fires around in, takes out the Chi Re. The T-37 died. So at least there was one for one there. And the KV-2 is now making his way, but he is a one shot if somebody can get one on target. Fireflies decided to come out now that the KV-2 had fired, but he got taken out by the enemy M44. So it's just two RT on our team versus two RT and a KV-2 on the enemy team. Our M44 has decided to go, well, gung-ho on us, and he's actually moving up to shotgun that KV-2. We're ready, and we get the kill. He gets the spotting. So it's two RT versus two RT. And Old Cook is moving. He's only got three shots. Now, what's he going to do? Is he going to guard his cap or go and cap in the other end? M44 appears to want to go up the other end. So he might be going to cap whilst we stay behind to guard ours.
Now there are bushes at the back of our cap, which would be perfect hiding place. If you've got good camo qualities in your RT, you can sit in those bushes and the enemy gets really close before they finally work out where you are and it's too late for them to do anything about it and you shotgun them. But no, Old Cook's decided he's going to go up the other side of the map and he's not going to cap or defend the cap. He's actually going to go after the enemy and shotgun them in the face. Now the view range of this RT is not that great. It's around about, if I remember correctly, 265 meters. Oh, and the enemy M44 has been spotted. And he just killed our M44. Oh no. Only three rounds left. He fires the round in and unfortunately it goes wild. He's only got two rounds left with two Artie to kill. Yep, he's decided he's going to try and defend his cap. And instead of actually going into the bushes actually in the cap, he's going to sit in the bushes behind the cap, I think. Okay. This is certainly a valid option, and it sometimes does work. The only trouble is, once you move the vehicle, you do lose a lot of your camo qualities straight away. But the enemy does have to sit in that cap circle if he's going to cap out. And he has to try and... Either that or he has to try and find you to kill you. Two shells. Two enemies. Can he do it? This will be fun if he does. Now, if the enemy's got any sense, they'll both try to come to the cap at the same time. It's They've got a Hummel and an M44. And if they both come at the same time, then when Old Cook fires and kills one of them, the other one will be able to get the kill on him. But, of course, you can't expect the enemy to show that sort of intelligence. Because, yeah, this is random battles, folks. <laughs> and if the enemy's going to do it the wrong way, they'll do it the wrong way. It's also very likely that the enemy, just one of them, will turn up at the camp and try to camp out whilst the other one covers him from a long way away. And if that happens, well, Old Cook gets a free shot at the enemy and then quickly re relocates to avoid any shell coming in. He's also just about to complete a mission because he's completed the secondary condition and he's only got to get a thousand hit points of damage i think and that will complete the main part of mission seven and that's the two minute warning and here it comes the uh, m44 it goes into the bush we've been spotted he takes him out now move yes the hummel on the other end did shoot and he obviously saw us and immediately reassigned his aim and he got a big hit on Old Cook for 27, well, all but 27%, 27 hit points. He's now only got 27, so 273 was the hit they got. That's a big hit. Now, does the enemy RT know where he's gone? Now, he did move to that bush directly after being hit. And I suspect the enemy might try to blind fire that bush, but he doesn't know where old cooks move to and he has to come to the cap but now a splash kill will be all he needs a splash kill on old cook and he's out the game but old cook's got one shell left and if he can get this kill with one shell you know what that means killing the last enemy with the last shell in your magazine is a faden's medal Tense ending for this battle. Any second now he could turn up. 30 seconds to go until the end of the game. It's going to be a draw if he doesn't turn up. If he does turn up and he gets hit and killed. It's going to be a last second victory. 
I'd also say to old Cook, don't move around so much because your camo's lower. And there he is. He's coming in. Here he comes. Have we been spotted? No, I don't think we have. But he shotguns him anyway and wins the game. <laughs> well done, old Cook. And he moves into the cap just at the end. Well, it's not your cap, but it's your cap, rather. It's not the enemy's cap, but <laughs> what a victory. That was tense. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's the first class tanker for old Cook of what uni in the Hummel. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 14. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. But best of all, he picked up a Faden's medal. And they're difficult to get as a tank driver, let alone as an arty. In fact, they're incredibly difficult to get as an arty. Because remember, you get less shells as an arty player. And a lot of the time, your opponents are moving around the battlefield quite uh, quickly and it's difficult to get shots on them but in this on this occasion it worked beautifully because he took out the last two enemies with his last two shells not one shell two shells and uh, took out both the m44 and the hummel to win the game i'm sure his teammates were astonished at that and you could tell that they were watching as well let's have a look at team scores didn't get the highest damage in the game. No, that went to the M44 and the enemy team. The one he shotgunned in the rear, he got 2,553 hit points of damage in that game. The next highest score on was the Hummel with 2,008. So he took out both of the best players on that battlefield in terms of hit points uh, scored. And after that, it was the Challenger with 1,937 hit points. And then we've got Old Cook. Well, he's actually uh, sixth. Was it sixth? Yes, I think it is. No, fifth. Because the KV-2 on the enemy team managed 1,763 hit points. But after all, he was taken out by Old Cook. Old Cook got 1,655 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, though, he got four kills, which equals that of the M44. He also got four. And I do believe that he actually did hit that M44 before because um, he did fire into that little alcove. And, well, unfortunately, with this particular... Um, a replay site we're not going to tell if he actually did hit him more than once but I suspect that he did actually hit him more than once because I think he fired into that little corner where the M44 was sighted uh, so equal four kills the next high scorers for the M44 on his own team got three kills so did the Firefly and the SU100 M1 on the enemy team and when it came to base XP it was old cook he was the high scorer 931 base XP and 747 went to the M44, but he was after the enemy M44 got 855. He fired 18 rounds, all 18 rounds in his magazine, five direct hits, two penetrations, which would probably be those last two, eight splash, damage of 1,655 hit points, of which 811 were at more than 300 meters. Obviously, the close range stuff was on the RT. One hit received, yes it was from that M, that Hummel who actually fired at fairly long range to hit him and did get a hit, splash damage. One enemy vehicle spotted, that would be one of the RT, so obviously one of the RT was spotted prior to that. And seven enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, 216 hit points of stun assist off six stuns. And he got one defense point as well because the M44 was in the cap when he shot him up the arse. Um, he earned 27,521 credits from the game, got personal reserve bonus of 20,641, and he got the Veni Vidi Vici 50,000 credits. So his total for the battle is a whopping 111,923 credits, and that's for a standard non-premium RT. And after repair and ammunition resupply, he took away 89,913 credits for that game. He picked up 931 XP, times 3 for the first victory, gone away with uh, 1,397 from personal reserves, took away 5,588 experience points altogether. So what a fantastic battle end game that was. We haven't seen many like that recently. And it's always lovely when, you know, Artie gets revenge on the enemy, sitting in the cap, waiting for them to turn up, and then shotguns them at close range, said, Aha, it's me! Hello! <laughs> yes, <laughs> the worst one you wanted to see at the worst moment. So, uh, if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like, and do subscribe to our channel, and hopefully uh, we'll have another replay for you very shortly.